Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for spending the time to get here in beautiful Singapore. And today, uh, we're talking SEO for business. All right. So before I start, I'd like to get an idea of who I'm talking to. So would you be able to raise your hands if you know what SEO is? If you know what it is? All right. And why don't we keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. I didn't say put them down yet, all right? Keep those hands up. Why don't we, and I want you to keep your hand up if you've done SEO. And keep them up if you've been paid to do SEO. All right, cool, excellent, thank you very much. That gives me a real good understanding of who we're talking to today. Because when you're paid to do SEO, and you know, a lot of us hear about it, but it, it does give me a bit more of an understanding of who I'm talking to. So you've heard my introduction today. My name's Matt Knight, and my beautiful wife is down the front here with me. We run MRKWP. We were called Divi Framework not long ago. We niched down into Divi, and unfortunately, Divi has a trademark on it, and I faced a bit of a disaster with the fact that we had to change our name because I realized my name was trademarked by somebody else. Not a good day when I realized I needed to change that. I wrote about that on the blog at mrkwp.com. Now, while we've got that in our minds, mrkwp.com, you can go there and access all my slides straight away. It's already there. All my notes are there as well, as well as links to different things for every single slide, okay? So as we go through this, you're going to be able to get all the information that you need. Go to mrkwp.com forward slash blog. It's all there, completely for free. You don't have to do anything. No affiliate links. Just enjoy. All right? But let's get into it today. So I've got heaps of years experience in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I actually started coding when I was about six years old. My dad taught me to code on a VIC-20 with BASIC on the Commodore VIC-20. That's before the Commodore 64. And he taught me how to make times tables applications and a few different things. And then I learned DOS. And so my comfort was the green screen, black screen kind of thing with the green text. That's my happy place. And it's still my happy place. All right? But I know all this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So why did I get into SEO? And it just simply comes down to this. It's the best way to get business results. You see, we were building websites, good code, nice designs, and no traffic. And why? Because we didn't, I didn't understand SEO. You know, and without this key part, we're doing a discredit to the rest of our work. All right? We're doing a discredit to it. So today, we're going to go through a basic understanding of getting business results with SEO. What do you need to know, and what do you have to do? OK? So first of all, we're going to say, what is SEO? I'm going to bring in some new terms for you, all right? Because we've kind of complicated it a bit, because most of us have been nerdy, pasty-skinned guys with a death metal shirt on that sits in the corner coding away with this ultra big gaming headset on and he's coding away aggressively. And whenever you ask any question, he's like, idiot, as if you don't know. No, we're not, I'm not that kind of guy. I love sharing, which is why I'm here today, right? So we're going to go, what is SEO? What makes the best page for SEO? You know, why does Google pick the top page? We're going to go into that. What is good content? What makes a fast page? How do I measure my results? How can social media help my SEO? And where do I start? All right, where do I get started? So let's get into it. First of all, what is SEO? Because it's not some kind of magic. I don't have to get a wand or go to, you know, for those people that are Harry Potter fans, I didn't have to go to Hogwarts to learn this. All right, it's not magic. It's simply some simple logic. And what helps us understand what is SEO is why do we have SEO in the first place? Let's think about this. Why do we have SEO? You see, because it really comes down to this. Search engines want to deliver a great experience. So in Australia, we have a term. Do we have any Aussies here? I know we do have a few. All right, so for the Aussies in the audience, you all know this phrase, when we're at a barbecue and nobody knows the answer, what do we say? Google it. That's correct. In Google, we trust. All right, it's no longer in God we trust, in Google we trust. And we all assume Google gives us the correct result, don't we? Anybody assume when they do a Google search that it's wrong? No, right? We all assume it's right. And what we have to remember is Google, when you, they send someone to your web page, they're referring someone of their trust to your website. It's a referral, isn't it? They refer somebody over. It's a business relationship of a referral. 
So at the end of the day, Google senses their customers for free when we do SEO correctly. So how can we refer somebody? I have to trust them, don't I? You don't refer people to things you don't trust. So if I've got a spammy looking website, Google doesn't trust me because my website's crap, right? So they're not going to refer. So at the end of the day, SEO is the ability of communicating how trustworthy your website is with Google. And they tell us in some cases what we need to do. All right, that's what SEO is, is earning trust with a search engine so you can get that traffic. And how do search engines understand if they can trust you? What do they do? They use these things called algorithms. So for those of you who don't know, Google has these things called robots, spiders, or crawlers. Take your pick, right? But basically, Google goes around the internet looking at all the different pages. It grabs your page and sends it back to their data center. And in that data center, they run algorithms over this index of data. And to understand that data, they use algorithms. The first one was that famous one where they looked at links. The founders of Google were in a library one day looking at white papers, and they said, how do we know which one's worth reading? And they said, well, surely it's the one that's been cited by other leading thinkers the most. Hey, what happens if we did the same sort of thing with web pages? And they started to count links and say, hey, the number of links you have to a web page, if a lot of people are linking to a page, that must be an indicator that this page is good. And that's really the birth of the first algorithm that was called the page rank. Now, since that time, they've come up with all sorts of other algorithms. Panda, that was a, a doozy of an update, that one. De detected duplicate content. A lot of people in WordPress got hit by this one up here because we end up with duplicate content in WordPress. How? Well, your category pages, tag pages, things like that. Everyone gets tag happy. Anyone got any tag happy customers that use their, yep, you know what I mean, right? They put hashtag this, hashtag that. They think they're on Twitter and you have to say, no, you're on your website. You don't need five variations of the same tag. You just created five pages with links to this stuff. That's duplicate content, right? Penguin, well that detected fake or duplicate links or links worth nothing. There's no point linking to your butcher's website from Plumber's R Us. It doesn't cut up, does it? Think about it, why would a plumber be linking to a butcher? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess maybe he did the plumbing at the butcher's. But you see what I mean? Like, there's not a lot of sense there. So that's what this one does. Hummingbird was another one. That helped people understand intent. A great example of intent. Yesterday, me and my wife were walking around the wonderful bay. We went up to see those gardens. I don't know if anyone's seen the gardens up here. They're beautiful. I'd encourage you to go take a look if you haven't seen it yet. And on the way back, we said, hey, let's get a Starbucks coffee. So I said, Starbucks. Now, because of the intent of the search, Google gave me directions to Starbucks. It didn't give me a 2,000 word essay on Starbucks on the founders. <laughs> didn't tell me about where they source their beans from or anything like that. They, it knows from intent. That was Hummingbird. And Pigeon was another one that helped with local search as well. Okay? And then we had Mobile Geddon. That was a while ago, but that basically means if your website doesn't work on mobile, uh, we don't like you anymore. <laughs> right? That's what Google said. And Fred, just so you know, every algorithm update recently is called Fred. We got sick of giving them names, they're all called Fred now, all right? So if you ever go to an agency and they say, oh, it was the Fred update, it could be any update that happened this year because algorithms are now updating around 18 to 20 times a day. The algorithms change that often with Google now. They're machine learning algorithms. So that's why it's important that we understand this. Why? Because let's go back to our original premise. What's important? The best result for the search engine, right? Search engines want to send people to the best possible page for whatever they search for. That's what Google's trying to do. And we need to work with Google. If we're going to get SEO results for our business, we need to work with Google to prove that we have the best result. We have to prove it. And how do we do that? By creating awesome web pages. And we're going to go through that today. What does it actually take okay, to make that great page? But that's what we're doing here. So less and less are we thinking about manipulating some sort of algorithm and we're actually thinking, what's the best page? 
How do I make sure that I'm giving my potential clients the best possible experience? That's what SEO is really all about. So what does an SEO tech do? What would you say you do here? <laughs> all right? So what we do is we check your website against the algorithms and guides. There's all sorts of guides out there. If you go onto my website, there'll be links to some various things as we go through. But we basically look at your website and we say, what's broken? What doesn't go with the algorithms? What's Google telling us that we need to fix? They can be things like you've got no alt text on any of your images. You've got long sentences that are boring. <laughs> you've got broken links. You've got duplicate pages. You've got images that are broken. You've got missing titles and descriptions on your page. All this kind of stuff, that needs to be fixed. And the higher quality we get, the better quality Google will pick up on your site. Pretty simple if you think about it, isn't it? So we fix those errors and recommendations that are coming from search engines. And there's great tools that help us do that. So what is SEO? It's making the best web page for a given search term to maximize referral traffic. That's what it is. It's nothing else. Forget all the other stuff. It's making the best web page for a given search term. And one thing I want to say really clearly is do not manipulate the algorithms. Don't try to manipulate it. What do you hope to gain? You're only going to get traffic from Google where people don't look at your page and leave anyway. If you don't have the right to be the first page, don't expect it. You've got to earn that referral, OK? Earn the referral. Make sure your page is actually worth linking to. And you'll find that people will actually link to it, OK? Pretty simple. So what makes the best page for SEO? What makes the best page? What do I actually have to have? You know, 60% of your effort, we've found, should go into your content. You can have everything else done great. And we've had clients like this, mind you. All right, they have everything else done great. I know, because we managed it. We have the top level scores on SEMrush and top scores on all the different tools that crawl the pages, fast loading times of less than three seconds on first load, under a second and a half per second load. We're talking a really great site, good mobile experience, but their content stinks. <laughs> it stinks. And they, they can't really get over 10,000 unique users a month. They're struggling to get over 25,000, 30,000 page views a month. Because people, and they don't get repeat visitors because their content stinks. Okay? So you've got to make sure you get the content done first. It should be mobile friendly, it should be fast. The other stuff is technical. Off sites, things like links, you know? You need people linking to your content. So let's keep going, you know, because you've got to think about it. You just can't get top spot without that content. It's not going to happen, all right? It ain't going to happen. So let's think about this. You need to have great content. So great content is always your starting point. Every other element of SEO can't match it, OK? It cannot match it. You need that great starting point of great content. So what is good content then? You know, so we know why we have SEO. We know the parts of SEO, but, but what, what is this good content? What does that look like? What makes a great page? And what tools can I use to get started with making this content? What can I actually use? So I've made this very simple checklist here. These are the four key things that I always look at. First of all, your page has to answer what potential clients are searching for. You could optimize for something that no one's searching for. It won't get you a result. OK, so branded terms, you, you should optimize for them, of course. But there's no point. Like, what's one of your latest products, Ricky, from WP Engine? A name of a product. Smart Plugin Manager. Smart Plugin Manager, right. So Ricky works with WP Engine, a classy WordPress hosting outfit out of Austin, Texas. And they come up with Smart Plugin Manager. But let's think about that. Is someone going to be searching for Smart Plugin Manager? Or might, they might, they're probably going to be searching for something else, aren't they? So you could optimize for Smart Plugin Manager. But the problem you're solving, that's not actually displayed in the name of the product. So you could rank number one for Smart Plugin Manager. But what your users are searching for won't be there. So your page needs to be comprehensive and easy to read. Does anybody ever get to a page and go, these sentences are just too short and easy to understand? Nobody? Didn't think so. All right, you should have images and video to help communicate and a great title and introduction. So let's think about that page. So Ricky's there with Smart Plugin Manager 
And he can go to Google and start to type in something and you get an auto-suggest. Everyone knows what I'm talking about there? Auto-suggest, right? You type something out, auto-suggest starts to fill out. And these are what we call key phrases. Now, it only gets there if someone searched for it. If nobody searched for it, it doesn't come in the list, okay? That's the only way it gets there. And this is what we call keyword research. Anybody heard the term keyword research? This is what it is, all right? Yeah, a few of you have heard of it. This is what it is. And you know what? It's a deep hole of stuff you can go into for a long time. I always start with this. And then from these ones, I look at the suggestions in Google, and then I go to the other types of tools when I need to refine that further. Now, for those playing at home who went to mrkwp.com, onto my blog, there's a link to 10 free research tools with Ahrefs, and I've got another great one from SEMrush as well there for you guys to click on to check out all sorts of free tools you can use to further enhance your search keyword um, research stuff, okay? So if you want to do keyword research, I encourage you to check that one out. So let's go on now. So I've got my keyword research. Now I need to actually make a great page, right? And the wonderful thing is, there's tools to do that. And in WordPress, they're free tools. Who would have thought that WordPress had a plugin for that? Oh, that's right. It's got a plugin for pretty much everything, doesn't it? Um, one of the ones that I really love right now is the SEM Rush writing tool. Man, I'm hooked on this thing. It's great. You put your research into it, and it tells you everything you need to do to write your content out. It even tells you other words to put in your content, tells you how easy it is to read, all that kind of stuff. And of course, for those playing at home on mrkwp.com, you'll be able to get some links to some great tools about what you need to do here. But let's just think about this. Make sure that you put headings in, all right? Nobody likes to see a big block of text with no paragraphs and subheadings. Make sure you do it. No more than 250 words between subheadings, please, all right? Nobody likes them longer than that. Keep your sentences as short as you can. Use active voice and make sure that you write to a lower grade level. Okay, you can still have some sophisticated sentences, but try and keep it simple. Everyone likes reading simple things. That's why people bought the Harry Potter book, the original Harry Potter book. They actually printed adult covers on it so adults could read it, even though it was made for primary school age kids, because everyone enjoyed the story. Okay? It was a really good thing to do. Oop, we've lost the lights. We're in the dark. All right. We, we better talk about structured data now, right? That's a bit of a dark space on the web. Okay, but um, look, once you've got that content, it's important to put some images and video in. And if you can do structured data, this is one of these little gold mines I'm finding lately. And uh, this here is what you see with structured data. So see here how we've got like this FAQ under the content here? That's done with structured data. One of my plugins is for the uh, Divi theme, and it, it makes this structured data go into your FAQ. People have frequently asked questions. If you think about it, everything that somebody asks on Google is a question. So it's a good idea to have an FAQ on your important landing pages. And when you put it in structured data, you get this nice little card here on your information. Now, obviously, if you can put a video on your page as well, hey, that's awesome. But relevant content, please, guys. There's no point putting cats playing pianos on your plumber's website. The GIF might look, might look real cool. Right, with that cat with its arms out playing piano. But it doesn't relate to the content. Okay? And don't go stealing other people's images. All right? Get original content where you can. Get your smartphone out and take a photo and put it in your web page. It's not rocket science, but you know what? It makes a difference. Relevant photos, relevant images to your content help a lot. Okay? So we've got all that stuff in there. And of course, we have to think about our title and introduction. Now let me ask a question here. Who would say this is a correct statement? Your membership journey starts when they land on your web page. Who reckons that's true? Anybody? Nobody. It's a bit of a trick question. Because the journey doesn't start there. If you think about it, the journey starts in Google. When they read the title and description of the text on your search link. And that's called a meta title and description. Okay. Now, Yoast has a great free tool. This is the example of it used, being used on Gutenberg. And you can see here that we've got the meta description being filled out. This is the words there. That's your ad. That's your free advert on Google where they're going to refer people through. Don't skimp on your titles and descriptions because that's your advert. 
all right? And you think about it, just by changing this, I did a test on one of our posts, and I went from 800 unique views a month to 2,500 just by updating the title and description to better describe what my page was about. That's all I did, nothing else. That's a lot of, that's not page views, that's users. All right? That's really cool. Two and a half thousand a month on one page. Think about what that would cost you with AdWords. At a dollar a click, you're already at two and a half grand for fixing one title and meta description. And for those playing at home, on an MRKWP on the blog, you can actually click through to some information about that. So what have we got here? You're going to craft this great content. Let's remember this. Your page has to answer what potential clients are searching for. Your page needs to be comprehensive and easy to read, and people need to understand it. It should have images and video, and it needs to have a great title and information with that meta description so that people can actually click it. Remember, that's your ad. That's your free ad in the search results in Google. Get it nailed. So I've got this great page, but everyone needs speed, right? You need it to be fast. Nobody ever said, hey, this page loads too fast. I don't know if I trust it. <coughs> it's like, hey man, I went to your place. Your internet's just too fast. I'm not downloading anything. <laughs> no, nobody ever said that, right? Because everyone loves fast pages, so let's give them what they want. Fast. Fast, fast, fast. And that means, I see a lot of people using GT metrics. You guys familiar with GT metrics? People know that tool. I love it. It's a fantastic tool. But one of the big issues is people focus on these two things. My website's got an A+. I've got a Y slow score of, you know what, that's, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because, you know what, does your client, you know, for Stephanie up the back there, for the tradies, none of her tradies are going to go onto Steph's website and say, oh, it's only an A-rated page speed score. <laughs> are they? It's not going to happen. They care about these other scores here. How long did it take to load? Total time. That's what matters. How big's the page? You know, if I give people a 22 megabyte background video just to fill my header up with some nice moving clouds, that's not a good idea to get this page speed down, is it? Right? Total time's what really matters. That's what people really care about. So don't get caught up with these scores. It's a vanity metric. What matters is the time. And I found this out when I was testing one of our websites. I got my score to increase, but my time went longer because I was using SSL with HTTP2. That meant that I can download lots of little small files instead of one big file all at the same time, and it made my page go faster instead of combining it together and getting my page speed score up. And that's when I realized I was chasing the wrong thing. I don't have to chase the score, I need to chase a good time. So for those people that really want to get good results, aim for less than three seconds for your first page load. Less than three, okay? So, of course, there's a whole bunch of tools that can help you do this. GT Metrics and Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a new tool from Google. It installs in Chrome. Use it, follow the recommendations. It's becoming a bigger and bigger thing. I use WP Rocket um, as a plugin just to generally give me a lot of real kick on my site to get me a long way forward to my page speed. It is premium, but I think it's worth it. Next, WP Smush. There is a free and a premium version of this. This optimizes your images, all right? So you don't end up loading like a 500 kilobyte image when 50 will do, okay? Strip them down, keep them small. Um, next up, we've got one of the most important ones of all, and that's use a high quality host. I love Kinsta, sorry Ricky. WP Engine's cool too, but I've been with Kinsta for a while. I've found them to be great. I can solidly recommend them. Um, I think they're fantastic. But the thing is, there's no point being on a bad host and getting slow times off that host or irregular downtime and stuff and expecting you to get good results. So spend the extra 10 or $20 on a premium WordPress host. And at the end of the day, they're the ones who support events like this. So you look at the sponsors here, they're good examples of good hosts. You've got your site grounds, your WP engines, your Kinsters, go with those sorts of guys because they know WordPress. That's the point. They'll make it fast. So we've got it all going fast. I've put my awesome content in there. Now I need to make sure I measure for the results. What you don't measure, you don't really know, right? 
And we always have analytics over assumptions. Assumptions is what gets us in trouble. Oh, my customers don't really want simple text to read. I've actually heard that from a lot of my customers. They don't really want that. How do they know? Have you asked them? Do they even read your meaningless drivel? I don't actually say that to the client, so don't, don't repeat that bit. But um, look, you know, make sure it's easy to read, OK? So we want to make sure we've got these ways of measuring things. And you probably already know them. Use Google Analytics. And when I say use, I don't mean put that snippet of code on your page and forget about it. I mean use it. Put the app on your phone. Read the stats, people. Right? It's got artificial intelligence there. It will even tell you what you need to know, but use it. All right? Google Tag Manager. Google didn't invent this just for the sake of it. It's actually got a real purpose. Use it. Use it. I wrote a recent blog post on my website about do you need a plugin for this? Do you need a plugin for Google Analytics? Do you need a plugin for your Facebook Pixel Tracker? The answer is no. I personally don't recommend you use plugins for this stuff really because you should know how this works. Because tracking is important, okay? Use Google Webmaster Console. Yep, that means don't just submit your sitemap, actually use it. Open it up, look at the information it's giving you, okay? And finally, I use the Rank Tracker with SEMrush. So once you've done one, two, and three, if you haven't done one, two, and three, don't look for a Rank Tracker, okay? Do one, two, and three first, then look for the Rank Tracker, all right? Rank Trackers, basically, you can put some details in them, and it tells you where you're ranking against your competition for certain keywords. So you can track it. Again, what you don't track, you don't know. You don't understand where you're really going with. So I'm tracking everything, this is all going good, but what about social media? What can I do with social media to help my SEO? And what I found is there's one particular social media platform that loves links. All the tweeters out there, looking at you, Twitter loves links. What do I mean by that? Twitter will actually share, let you share traffic in links. You can put your link on Twitter and actually show it to people. Half the time you put a link on Facebook to your YouTube video and all of a sudden it kind of just disappears. Where'd that go? Well, hey, who would have thought that Facebook doesn't want people to leave Facebook? True, isn't it? You think about it. Facebook's model is showing people adverts. They do not want businesses to be sharing links without paying because people leave Facebook and that stops them making money off them. Because the more adverts Facebook shows, the more money they make. So when you don't just ignore sharing your links, but just know Twitter loves links. And that means you can share this great content you've crafted multiple times. So on my pages, I put them in an auto sharer. I use Zoho Social or Deliver It. Um, other people use Hootsuite and that kind of stuff, right? And you put your link in there and you say, share this every month. And just keep sharing it. Because how long is content lifetime on social media? How long does it live there for? A couple of days? A week, maybe? You see, I see a lot of people putting all this effort into making Facebook posts and Twitter posts and Instagram images. But after a week, no one looks at them anymore. Has anybody ever here had a link to somebody like an image older than like a week or two on Instagram? It happens sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah Facebook. But how, how often does it happen? Like maybe one in a hundred? Not without boosting, you're not paying for ads or anything. Like somebody actually finds content you posted a year ago and just randomly likes it. If they did that, you'd think, man, I've got a stalker. What's going on here, you know? Why is someone liking something I posted two years ago? But the thing is, you can have a blog post and update it once every two years, just give it a little bit of improvement, you know, on something real important for your industry. And it'll get you traffic every single day of the week from Google over and over and over. And it will still be relevant for those people searching for it. <coughs> it's not going to change. That's the power of your content lifetime. So use automation tools to share that piece of great content you spent all the effort building and make sure that people get it shared to them on Twitter. Because, you know, if I show you something today, like structured data, somebody might not have used structured data before, it's new to them today. I've been using it for two years. But it's new for someone today, right? And that same information I learned before is still relevant today. So why should we not do that? 
So use those automation tools. You create that great content, share it again and again and again. Use Google My Business for it as well. If anyone is aware of Google My Business, you have the posts in there. They get a heap of traffic for nothing. Make sure you use it. It works really, really well. All right, so WordPress and SEO, where do we actually start? You've seen all this today. What are you gonna do to get started? What do you actually have to do? And these are some simple steps. First of all, start with WordPress. Up here, start with WordPress. WordPress actually, out of all the tests I've seen, gives you more of a result than anything else out of the box. It's, it's really quite a great CMS. It's such a wonderful piece of software, okay? Second up, let's make sure we get a fast host, okay? If you don't have these two things sorted, then the rest of my advice is probably a little bit mute. <laughs> Next up, use a mobile optimized theme. Now, I've been a fan of Divi for a long time, but I've been starting to use Astra a lot, particularly since Gutenberg's come out. And the reason is simply this, the pages are lighter. All right, each page has less code. So let's think about why this is important. Google has a set amount of resources, don't they? They've got data centers, and they're sucking all these pages in. Now, if they've got a budget of how much processing power they're gonna give my website, and all my pages are half the size, they're gonna get through twice as much content of the same amount of processing power. You get what I mean? Because the pages are smaller, they're lighter, they're leaner. And not only is that better for my own customer because the page loads faster, but at the same time, Google likes it too. So look for something that's lean. I like Astra, it's a good place to start. If you can get something that's AMP compatible, I think AMP is worth exploring. Um, take a look at that, accelerated mobile pages we're talking about. Install Yoast, that's free, great SEO tool. Um, I would encourage you to use SEM Rush. that's free as well. And of course, once you've got these tools set up, fill your website with great content using the tips I've got today and you'll be well on your way to getting great traffic. And look, that's it. That's how you do it, <laughs> all right? So remember, focus on content and uh, ask me some questions. The only bad question is the one that's never asked. Okay, questions anyone? Okay. Hi, I'm Frank. Hi, Frank. Um, I have a website which has some technical products. Yep. And uh, they are sold in this region. Yes. So, from an SEO perspective, would it be better to have a, uh, a website, a domain, which is a local? Or yeah, the domain name extensions have no impact on where you're ranking. What matters is your citation and making sure your address details are correct. So that means um, there's a listing management tool that you can use in SEMrush, but you look at where your domain name is and where that business is mapped to. All right? Um, and within that, you'll be able to see, hey, Google knows that I'm in this area. Google knows I'm servicing this region. So that's what matters. Your content, again, and doing the right structured data, that's what will determine um, that Google knows you're in the right local area. You're welcome. Down the front. Yes, yes it will. Yeah. Anything you do to improve your content can improve ranking. When it comes to images specifically, um, not having something like dsc001.jpg, it's better to have Matt and Kate at the zoo.jpg and then have the alt tag saying Matt and Kate at Singapore Zoo. You get what I mean? So describing as best you can. If you think about it, if you can look at something and not know what it is from any form in a machine, then you're better off relabeling that to make it so it's comprehensible. So names with hyphens for your image names is best, okay? okay. Yeah, we've got a couple up the back there, Ricky. Hi Matt. Hey. Uh, that was good insight that Facebook, I mean, it's, it's obvious now, but it was a good reminder that Facebook does not like links out of Facebook. But why did you say that Twitter 
likes, links. That well, <coughs> Twitter's becoming one of the big search engines. So let's think about what Twitter is the number one in right now. They're number one in news that's now. So nobody ever says we're trending on Facebook, right? Nobody ever says we're trending on YouTube. They say we're trending on Twitter because Twitter is about now information. And Twitter is used to share links by news sites. That's their bread and butter. So sharing links in Twitter, what I found if I share the same link in Facebook and Twitter with the same audience, I get more views in Twitter instantly for the same content when everything else is considered the same. Because Twitter actually wants you to use them as a kind of search engine for what's happening right now. That's what they want. That's what their speciality is. So for them, you finding content and using it as a search engine and going to the link is the same benefit that Google has. They're helping you answer a question about right now. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Matt. Hey. Uh, so I wanted to ask a question without making it sound uh, so, so complicated because working with users, one of the, the difficult questions they ask and it's something that you mentioned uh, when their content isn't good. Yes. Uh, isn't that subjective uh, a lot of times? I understand that you have the bullet points of you know, what qualifies as, as good content. Uh, but if you've spoken to anyone who's built their own website, they, they all imagine that they have the best content that's out there. Sure. Well, all I can tell you is the stats prove it. That's when you say, let's look at the analytics. Because Google didn't come up with this because it's going to hurt their users, did they? Let's think about this for a second. Does Google want to send people to anything that's not proven? No. They keep the analytics. They're, they're, they've got some of the best um, AI learning tools. They built TensorFlow. They're using Markov AI algorithms and all these different wonderful technology things with one purpose, help us as Google understand how to deliver the absolute best result to search. So when somebody says, hey, no, my content's better than what Google says, they're actually saying, I'm smarter than Google. You know what I mean? Like to take it to that level. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that Google always knows better with every audience. You can have things that are more formal or less formal in the way that you communicate things. And there's also things like trust. For example, Google will look at things like, hey, this guy's Matt Knighton. He's writing about a torn calf muscle and what he did to recover it, we're not sending anybody there because he's not even a doctor. He talks about SEO for goodness sakes, right? Because there's a level of trust there. So there is that factor to consider. And Google does factor that stuff in. They have a term called your money or your life. And anything that's in your money or your life, things like legal advice, stuff on divorce, things about medical journals, all that kind of stuff, have a slightly different algorithm applied to them about the way those businesses communicate because it's different, right? Reading a medical journal is a heck of a lot different than reading something about my steps to do a kickflip on a skateboard, right? And the audience is different. So do your guidelines or those discussions that you have with your clients, do they generally fall then industry specific? They do. As a matter of fact, the SEMrush tool does apply those industry specific things in the writing tool. So if you put those types of keywords in there, it will automatically say, we encourage you to be more formal or more casual. We suggest you to write slightly longer sentences for this and your content should be 2,000 words, not 1,000 because of the type of thing that you're targeting. You. Yeah, so it does take that into account. Yes, sir? Okay, we're just gonna have to finish up the questions now because we have hit our Break time. Okay. And grab me if you want to ask anything as well yeah. afterwards. I'm, I'm big, but I'm approachable. All right. Yeah, <laughs>